No, but we, we have made a lot of progress, obviously. When you look at that here, I mean, it's unbelievable. <clears throat> the snowball is rolling, and the snowball is rolling so fast that it is envisageable, of course, for all of us to have a major market capitalization in Europe. What we need to do now is to organize tech-savvy verticals of professionals in the asset management business in Europe. We already have the single book with your next growth. We need to have now the investors, exactly like in the US, that can you know, provide intelligence and provide also the liquidity to all those uh, market capitalization. That's, what, that's where we are today. What's the role of regulation here? Because one of the fears from Margaret Vestiga was that the moat was too wide. There'd been all sorts of behaviors from some of the big American tech titans that has simply just made it impossible for European companies to catch up. Do you think that's still the case? Is there room for f further regulatory action at this point? No, no, but it's true that in 100% of the big rounds and in 100% of the mega rounds, you have now a massive proportion of U.S. capital. That's true. It's true also that uh, in, a, in, in a lot of instances, notably in medtech, biotech, uh, but also a lot of digital companies are being bought at the end of the day by the ecosystem of uh, the U.S. software. So it makes it difficult for Europe to generate new SAPs. And it's true also that we have a, a sort of demographic problem. I mean, when you look at the market cap of tech companies in Europe, those which are at par with the US ones of the past 15 years, there is only SAP. That's a problem. So to counter that, we need to put more capital and we need to have entrepreneurs who have the personal project to build mega companies. We need to have entrepreneurs who, whose project is not to sell to U.S. companies. I'm sorry to say that. And we start to have that kind of uh, adventurers, I would say. I mean, the equivalent intake of uh, the Francois Pinault and, uh, and the Bernard Arnault's of the luxury industry. That's where we are today. And uh, typically, Spotify is an example. There's been a somewhat of a sea change over the weekend with the talk of multilateralism, but also some form of an, an accord between the Europeans and the Americans on technology. What does that partnership mean to you? And does it mean less reliance on some of these antitrust cases against U.S. tech companies, but more collaboration now? No, but it's true that uh, the, the, the U.S. industry has an interest to see the European you know, tech, digital and software industry raised to its natural you know, standing power. I mean, uh, and for that, uh, I, would, I would advocate for the hyperscalers and, and, the, and, and the mega US companies to refrain from the temptation to crop out all the intelligence of Europe. I mean, uh, Europe will not be only a sort of a huge Israel which is producing intelligence and discoveries and, uh, and patents and startups that are all being bought by the U.S. economy. That cannot work like that. Huh? So, I mean, there is a question of behavior. Huh? I, so the message probably for the, for the, for the mega U.S. companies is refrain. <laughs> Let Europe stand up. And then we will have extraordinary positive and win-win partnerships. Otherwise, probably there will be regulatory hurdles for the U.S. companies.